Welcome to Designs for Zen Yoga. Remember, please take care of yourself. Check with a doctor if you need to before you start to exercise and only do what's comfortable. No pain. Do what works for you. And hello. Welcome back. Guess who's here again? After a year. So a year ago, I started my yoga journey, and now I'm continuing it as Washimi once again from Agretzico. Since we didn't have any suggestions for this month, I decided to go back to my old staple, and we're going to have some fun doing slow yin yoga. If you want, there's a playlist here, and it's in the chat, but really you want something calming, uh, something that you can maybe listen on. Some people do like silence, but we're going to be doing yin yoga, and so... It can lead to a lot of thoughts, and it's kind of like a type of meditation, but if you have a lot of negative thoughts, it can get overwhelming. So at the top here, I put a helpline. There's lots of helplines. We've got your crisis text line, your mental health hotline, and then you've got the suicide prevention hotline. So whatever you need, please seek it. It's free. If you need any help whatsoever, definitely do that, because those thoughts in your head may be real, they may not be telling the truth, but they're definitely real. And we want all of you to stay safe as you're trying this very quiet, introspective yoga. So to get started today, we're going to need to have a lot of aids. So you're gonna to wanna to have a couple blocks. If you don't have blocks, a paper towel roll can work if it's a nice fat one. Uh, if you have a big book or um, some towels, things like that, those will help as well. And we probably a blanket or a pillow so go grab all those things again make sure you've got your nice soundtrack playing in the background and we'll get that all lined up here perfect all right so yes as Oh, gotta go like this. As Washimi, I'll be taking you through today's yin yoga. Now, as I mentioned, a year ago, I took a yoga class for just normal yoga teacher training. And now I've taken a 50-hour yin yoga class with Bernie Clark, who is the person that actually owns the domain yinyoga.com. If you haven't heard the difference before, yin yoga is the opposite of yan yoga, the fast yoga where you're working on your muscles. Yin focuses more on your joints and holding poses for longer to soak into your fascia and all those joints and things so you will feel different feels in this practice so again make sure you've got your blocks ready we're actually going to start with a supported bridge and i'll explain more about this type of yoga as we go so if you want the blanket underneath you for cushioning feel free for supported bridge i'll just show you now normal bridge pose you start on your back and then you lift up your hips and you hold it there just with your body, but because we're doing supported bridge, start on your back and then take those blocks and you wanna just lift your hips and slide it under so it's about under your sacrum, your tailbone. See there? And if you need more lift, you can use more blocks and get higher and higher. Really, you don't want any pain or discomfort. Remember, the blocks can get rotated from side to side. I say don't do like the skinny, long, tall one if you need to do two, but find a place where you can get a little support underneath so that you don't have to hold yourself up with your core and you can be in this back bend and just hold it here. So the first thing you're going to learn is that in these poses, you are going to be doing a lot of long holds. So as you're coming in, make sure your feet are nice and spread apart. Make sure that lower back feels supported. Your arms can be down with palms up or down. Now this is how you feel your shoulders. Your shoulders and your bones actually are shaped different ways. Maybe your hands wanna be above your head in a diamond or a T. Find wherever you need to be for this pose. And I'm gonna be getting up and talking through it. So again, just find that supported bridge. You can let your eyes close gently if you like. Wherever you are in that supported bridge, just start to relax, come to your breathing. 
Notice where you are right now. So again, yin yoga is allowing the poses to set in. Many people that have never done this before find it very difficult not to hold the pose, but to stay in it. So as you go through this, if you start to feel uncomfortable, like, man, I gotta move my body or whatever, ask yourself first why you're feeling that, if it's impatience, if your, your thoughts are running away with you, or if it's actually like uncomfortable. And if it's uncomfortable, again, what we wanna do is get rid of that discomfort, either adjusting, maybe lowering down to the earth, or just going into a savasana. So you can always find your corpse pose, your, your savasana as a rest. When we talk about holding these for a long time, again, we're using Bob Ross rules here at Riftwing Designs for Zen Yoga. Don't feel pain. Now pain can be anything from burning, tingling, electrical, pins and needles. A dull ache is okay. Uh, if it feels like you're falling asleep or if there's some kind of a sharp twinging, that's pain. So if you feel any of that pain, back off. In yoga, you may have heard before the word edge, finding your edge. So the edge is where you can go, your limit. You can't really stretch more without getting into danger. Your body's not comfortable going that far. So in yin yoga, you go to your edge and then you back off quite a bit, about 20%. You find where you wanna be and then you go, oh, okay, let's go someplace comfortable but enough that I still feel this pose. So we're starting in supported bridge. Again, this is a little back bend. It allows your spine to kind of stretch out. We're gonna be doing a lot of spine and hips today. There's a lot of us sit a lot. So again, notice those sensations. Again, adjust if you need to, but once you find that cozy place in each yin pose, just find stillness. If you wanna regulate your breath, you can. If you notice your thoughts, that's fine as well. In some poses, I'll give you a little bit of silence at the end. During that silence, you can come back to an intention we're gonna actually set the intention after this, but if you wanna start picking one now, feel free. You can come to a question like, why am I feeling this? What am I doing? Or you can come to the music. That's why it's good to have music. Distract yourself from your thoughts for maybe just a little bit as you notice what's going on in your body. Maybe come to mindfulness. Mindfulness, again, is one of my favorite ways to meditate. It's where you just notice. Notice everything. Notice the sounds around you. Notice your body, where it touches the ground. Notice the feel of the air on your skin, your clothes on your skin. Notice your breath. Notice the warmth or coolness of the breath in your mouth or nose as you inhale and exhale. Notice the movement of your rib cage and diaphragm as you bring in fresh air. All these things are a kind of meditation, this mindfulness, just being aware of where you are right now and staying in the present moment, right now, because this is all you have. Again, as I mentioned, mental health is very important. And one of the biggest ways that I'm actually stuck in my rut is often focusing on something other than the present. Thinking about things I've done in the past. Well, you can't change the past. <laughs> we can sure dwell on it, but you can't change it. And so I take my thoughts away from the past. And sometimes I worry and worry is thoughts of the future. And you don't want to think about the future either because the future hasn't happened. You can think about things that you can do, but don't worry about it. Some things are out of your control. So my personal intentions or mantras are to stay in the present and to not think of things that I can't control. Don't dwell on the past. Don't worry about the future. 
You may discover your own demons as you're going through this again, and that's fine. This is a great way to do that. Again, do it safely, no pain. And again, if there's any mental distress, you can come out of it, do something else, or if you need to, call those helplines, okay? So we'll stay in this pose for just one more minute. I'll let you have a little peace and quiet, and then we'll get moving. All right, now what we're gonna do to get out of the back bend is to just barely lift your hips and pull that block out from underneath you so you're returning to just a normal laying on your back here and just stay here. So when you come out of a yin pose, maybe it's good to just stay still or to go into that savasana or maybe you need to windshield wiper your knees and hips Find the counter pose that feels right for you. A lot of yin yoga, after you get out of those long held poses, is to find that correct thing for you. And it may take a little experimentation, that's fine too. <laughs> and it may differ day to day. Again, do what you need here. And just feel that bliss of getting out of that long hold. And when you're ready, we're gonna just roll on over. We're going into Sphinx pose. So for this, you may want that blanket or a pillow. I'll demonstrate Sphinx first. So when you're on your belly, your hands go in front of you, elbows underneath your shoulders, and you lift your chest. You wanna have a little back bend here, so it's another back bend, but you don't wanna feel like there's too much in your back. So you can take your pillow here, or your blanket, and put it under your chest so that it's holding you up so that you don't have to push with your belly. You can actually relax your spine a little and just let that back bend soak in. So find your sphinx. Again, elbows kind of underneath the shoulder. If it needs to be wider, it's fine. One of the things about this pose is that your body is different. Maybe your feet are together, maybe they're apart. Maybe you even need to have a blanket underneath your hips to keep those hip bones comfy. And if you want and you've got your block, maybe you put your head on a block and just let it go. So wherever your sphinx is, play around with the props for about 30 seconds. Let's see what kind of aid will help you. Maybe you do want to keep your head up or maybe you want to let it down. And you can always, again, go into crocodile with your hands crossed and just let your head down if sphinx doesn't feel good for your shoulders or your back. You can just cross your arms and let your head sink in the crocodile instead of sphinx. And wherever you are, we're going to start holding. So again, this is another back bend. As we're going into Sphinx, again, notice, maybe come into that mindfulness. Stay aware of the present with some acceptance, but also stay curious and observe. Um, Bernie Clark mentioned one thing that has stuck with me the most from my yin yoga training, and that is a question that the, Bo the Buddhist Zen monks would ask all day for their whole life. One question, what is this? What is this? This, the present. For every single living moment, what are you experiencing? That's mindfulness. 
and it kind of blows your mind a little. So I'll give you some time to start to think about that, to start to feel that yin yoga. And again, if you notice that you want to come out of that pose, ask yourself first, how are you feeling? Is there actually pain, pins and needles? burning, electrical, sharp, or is it just something stopping you? A thought, doubt, questions, a lot of introspection here. So you'll be in this for a couple more minutes. Take your time now. And again, just observe where you are. So for yin yoga, you're not competing with anyone except yourself. And honestly, in all yoga, you should never be comparing poses between what you can do and what anyone else can do. It's just you. If you feel like you could go into a deeper back bend here, there is the option to go into seal. Again, only do this if it feels right to you. So for seal, we'll just hold it for a minute. But you press into your hands and you lift up and straighten your arms. And this is a very intense, deep back bend. It's not for everybody. If you want to try it, go ahead. And you'll notice like where your shoulders are, like high or low, what feels good here. Notice your spine. Notice where you're pr pressing your legs and feet into the ground. Do not feel any pain in your back. Nothing sharp. Nothing burning. If you feel that, let it out. Go somewhere else. Again, you can go back down to your sphinx or sink into crocodile. And if you're in crocodile, you can always turn your head the other way. And if you are in seal, we're just going to hold it for another 20 seconds. Remembering to breathe. And wherever you are, start to find your way just back down to the ground, letting that back bend out, noticing if you need to put your hands in front or behind you, maybe windshield wipering your legs, finding that nice gentle release, and maybe it's just laying still. You also have the option here for frog or half frog where you lift up one leg, pull the knee up, and just let the hips and back go. So I'll give you a minute here to rebound. If you do half frog, make sure that you Unstretch the other side. And wherever you are, when you're ready, push up and back. We're going into child's pose. So you want to have a wide leg child's pose, or if it feels good, you can do a closed leg child's pose, or Maybe you want to put that blanket or pillow underneath your chest so it's not as intense. And then you fold over and down. Maybe even rest your head on a block. Try something different again, like those aid yoga classes that we did. So find your child's pose and then just rest there. 
Again, your hands can be forward or back, side to side, just find an area to relax in your child's pose. Child's pose is always available. It's always good. Notice here how in child's pose your spine is bending the other way, right? So it's more concave. You're doing forward fold, a little baby forward fold here. Again, come back to your breath. We are gonna set that intention next. So pick one if I've said anything sage that sounds like it's good to you. Notice if you have any emotions, what they are, why they are, you can think to yourself a little bit. If you don't want to let those thoughts go, I mean, again, if it's bad, notice it. I know it's not necessarily true, but maybe question, you know, why am I feeling this way? Why do I care so much? We worry and we stress because we care. It's because you're a good person. It's because you want to do better, be better. Because you don't think you're enough. Well, let me tell you, you are enough. Exactly who you are, where you are right now. Maybe that's your intention for today. I am enough. You can stay here or you can come up to seating, uh, cross-legged. Or there's this thing called W. If your hips do this thing, your legs come out on either side, kind of like a frog. <laughs> And it's a W seat, so, um, or you could sit on a block and raise your hips. Maybe that feels good. And maybe put a blanket underneath you. So I'm on a block with my knees and feet out. Just try something different. Wherever you are, come to a seat, shoulders back, spine up. We're now 20 minutes into our yoga session and we're setting our intention. I love it. This is yin yoga at its finest. So inhale with me up, exhale, arms down, sweep them behind you. And then one more time up. And draw them to center. Think of that intention. And we'll set it with two breaths first, one in and out. Exhale. And then a big inhale. And let it go, sealing your intention. Yin yoga is not about movement. And that about fast movement. So we're not going to do our normal warm-ups and shoulder rolls and all that. But if you feel like you need it, go right ahead. But what we're going to do here, again, if you're sitting on a block, maybe you stay there. Or maybe you just stay on the edge of a rolled up blanket. We're going to go into butterfly. Some of you may like full butterfly, but I'm going to do half butterfly. So you can sit on a block if it helps your hips. Or if it feels better, you can just sit down. So what you wear is one leg's extended, the other leg you fold in and you place it against your thigh. And you sit up straight, so this is a half butterfly. Again, just to demonstrate full butterfly. In yin, they like it wider, so your feet are further out, but your toes are together, and you're making this nice little diamond. So you can be in full butterfly or half. We're gonna do half here. And just for another option, right, maybe you try to rotate that hip again and do that W shape. This is like half frog seated. So maybe that feels really good to open up your hip and stretch it out. Remember, we're doing lots of hips. So play around first, just finding if full butterfly, half butterfly, or half seated frog feels good. And then wherever you are, you're gonna rotate your chest over. And then just gently fold over. This is in yin yoga folds, like forward folds, are not intense. You can bend the spine and let it go. Maybe you want to stack a couple blocks and rest your head on it. And the thing is, the longer you hold this pose, the more flexible you'll become. So as we start to hold these butterfly poses, notice when 
you feel the release and you can go a little bit deeper. Okay, so we're gonna start this one. Again, find what's comfortable for you. If you need an aid, use an aid. If you don't, just lean over that. Let your neck go. Maybe roll it from side to side here. Just find where your butterfly needs to be right now. You don't have to be perfect. Stay relaxed. Find what part of this pose speaks to you and ignore the rest. Okay, seek balance. And again, watch out for anything sharp or burning, tingling, electrical, stabbing. Come to stillness when you can, and if you need to adjust, do. But again, observe if you have any discomfort why you're feeling that. In yin yoga, a lot of it again is just sinking into it, allowing yourself to find that release that maybe we don't welcome a lot in the speedy day to day, right? So that's why it's uncomfortable. <laughs> We've not only slowed down, we're almost at a complete stop here. Just listening to our body listening to the music. Allowing life to happen. And being one with ourselves. And we'll hold here for one more minute. Again, notice if you want to go a little deeper now. And then just relax. And then very, very slowly start to come up out of that fold. It doesn't have to be one vertebrae at a time, but just intentionally, slowly stay engaged as you're coming out. And then we're gonna switch sides. If you need to do some windshield wipers in the middle, go right ahead. And then we're gonna stick out your other leg and pull that other foot in. And again, play here with seeing if you wanna do the butterfly or if you wanna do the frog leg. And it may be different on the other side. I know we talk about balance, but if it does not feel good on one side, you may just have something different. Maybe a muscle, maybe a strain, maybe your bone is shaped differently. We learned a lot about anatomy and bones. So find where your legs wanna be for this other side, and then rotate your chest towards the extended leg and just fold over. Again, noticing what kind of aids you may need to be able to fold over that leg and find a nice, comfortable forward fold on the other side. In these forward folds, you may notice you can feel your breath on the back of your ribs. Maybe focus your breathing into those little ribs in your back. Again, maybe you roll your head from side to side, let your neck go. Find that stillness.
focus on how you feel. Focus on stillness. Stillness of your body. Allowing your muscles to let go. To get this stretch into all of your joints. Ligaments and fascia. Little stretchy bits that are not the muscle in your body. Focus on stillness of your breath, which will help to still your mind. And again, focus on stillness of the mind. Noticing those thoughts and maybe coming back to, what is this? Or what stops you? Or maybe just noticing again, sensations of your breath, moving your body, sensations of your body touching the ground in so many different places. Maybe the stretchy feeling you're getting in your neck, in your back, in your hips, your shoulders. A feeling of the air on your skin, in your clothes. Maybe here sinking just a little deeper if it's comfortable for you. I'll be here for one more minute. And then wherever you are, when you're ready, start to very, very slowly come back up and out of it. Maybe doing just a little back bend, stretching your legs out. Again, you can always go into Savasana here. Allow your body just to recover from that little forward fold. So now we've done two back bends and two forward folds, uh, actually three, including child's pose. So now we're gonna do some spinal movements. Uh, we're gonna go onto our back and do banana asana, which I love. A, because I love bananas, and also B, uh, because it is a really good side stretch. So for this one, you may want a block or a blanket, but it's not necessary. What we'll do here is you go down onto your back, and you start with your legs and arms together, for banana, what you do is you raise your, well, actually we shouldn't do our arms first. Let's take our legs and just walk your heels out to the side of the mat, like the corner. If it feels good, right? So you have to find what feels good. So your legs are now, your hips are the same and your legs are just kind of rotated out. You can cross one ankle over the other one way. And if it's towards the outside of the mat, that'll give you like a little banana shape. Or maybe if you go the other way, that'll give you a different stretch. So as you go through, maybe you play with your ankles a little and just notice. And so for the arms here, again, beware of any pins and needles or tingling. You may cut off blood flow. But what you want to do is raise your arms up, and they can be straight up. They can come together, which looks like a banana. Or you can grab elbows and just rotate the torso a little bit. So wherever you are, find your banana. It can be arms out, legs crossed, arms crossed, hands together, hands apart. What you want to feel is a stretch that goes from your IT band and your hips all the way up your chest, across your body, maybe even turn your head. Feel that side stretch, deep, deep, deep side stretch, not too deep, okay? No pain, no tingling, no electrical, no pins and needles. Aching is okay, stretching is okay. But if it's too much, remember, when you find your edge, just back off 20%. And again, maybe you notice if your legs are crossed one way or the other, it feels better. Uh, and you can put a blanket or a block underneath your arms or legs or feet, or <laughs> it might feel good to have a weighted blanket across your hips just to hold them down a little bit. I did not know this, but in yin yoga, they use sandbags, like heavy sandbags, and they stick them on top of you for like that weight. Uh, 
it's really funny because I was thinking of doing a weighted blanket aid yoga and um, one of those little rollies, the foam rollers aid yoga because both of those feel amazing and you can do some cool stuff with them. So again, maybe this winter, fall, we'll do a couple new aid yogas for the series, again, which the rest of them are on my YouTube, on weighted blankets and foam rollers because it does feel good to have a little bit of pressure sometimes, especially since we're still in COVID and you can't really have people pressing down on you, I guess, unless they're in your pod. <laughs> and if you want someone to press down on your hip gently, they sure can, but hips or shoulders, all that. But anyways, again, the, the point is you just wanna feel that stretch. You want it to be deep, if you want it to feel good. It can feel a little, a little tough, but not too tough. I'm gonna be here for about another minute. Again, maybe adjusting, seeing if you can go deeper into your banana, or maybe trying to cross those other angles. Again, just be aware of everything in your mind, in your body, your breath. When you're ready, you're gonna un unwind your banana and just kind of go into that savasana again. Just notice how your hips and back and shoulders might feel as the rebound from the banana on one side. And maybe you need to windshield wiper your legs, or maybe you just need some stillness. And wherever you are, when you're ready, we're gonna come back down and we're gonna do banana on the other side. So first walk those feet over, keeping the hips still, maybe finding a crisscross of your legs and ankles, and then notice when you move the upper torso, head, and arms, if you want to do a different hand stretch here. Notice where your neck is, so which way you want to look. Find that edge, and again, back off just a little. And your banana asana on the other side. For me, my left shoulder had an injury years ago when I was overly ambitious doing chaturangas and I feel an ache with my arm raised, but it's just an ache. It's a tightness. Stopping and asking yourself, what do you feel? Is it uncomfortable because it's tight? It's sore, it hasn't stretched that far. Or is it that pain, that sharpness, stabbing, electrical? For me, it's just an ache. So it may be that I often don't do this on this side anymore because of that injury, maybe scar tissue. Everybody has differences, left to right. Everybody has different injuries, uses or not uses of your body. Yin yoga can help you to discover that. And again, it can vary from day to day. When I was doing that first yin yoga last week after doing my yin, I noticed I had no balance whatsoever when I was trying to do single stands on my right foot. I could not do it. I don't know why it was just not working that day. But I noticed that my forward folds were super bendy. I had never gone that deep before, but after a week of yin yoga, you bet I was bendy bendy. So I just notice there's nothing wrong with being imbalanced. Nobody is exactly mirrored from side to side. 
just like no one is alike. You are yourself. And as much as they say, you are a unique snowflake, you are special, you are enough. So be yourself. Accept yourself. A couple more breaths here. And noticing maybe if the opposite ankle Feels better on top on this side. And then when you're ready, you can start to just shimmy your way over. Unwinding your banana. Ooh. Noticing if you need any other counter moves. It may differ on this side. It sure does for me. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start to go into our cool down. We have three more poses. Yin yoga is very, very slow and there's a very few poses. So we're going to do our leg twists. Again, you may want to have a block or something like that. So you have many choices for the different kinds of leg twists. Um, first, draw your knees into your chest and just give yourself a hug and maybe circle them around. Noticing your hip bones and your thighs. And the way that they instruct is the two knee twist, but if you like to drop one knee at a time, you can extend one leg and twist over. But if you're with me, hold both of your knees, maybe using your abs to slowly lot, lower your knees down together. And if they don't go all the way down, that's where you put that little block underneath. Or maybe you just try putting a block underneath because it will, again, allow your shoulders to stay open and down and keep those hips up. Or maybe even, Maybe even two blocks. Keep that knee and leg up. Or maybe put a pillow or a bolster underneath their legs. Give it a try. And remember, if it's comfortable, you can look away from those crossed legs. So find your side twist here. And we'll be here for a few minutes. And again, as you're doing this twist, come back to your breath. Yin yoga focuses on flexibility, not endurance. You're allowing your body to find that movement and then find the stillness after. It can help with mobility. Again, maybe like this shoulder that I have, maybe doing that more often will help me to get a little more range of motion. Maybe it'll help you. Again, always talk to your doctor. But remember, if it doesn't hurt, it may help. And try to do something different. The adventure in yin yoga is about the stillness. In yan yoga, often it's prescriptive. You have to do all the flows and the salutations and the ups and the downs. Get your heart rate going and work on your core. And in yin yoga, it's a different map, a different path. It's not right or wrong, it just is. It may or may not be for you, but the fact that you're trying it today is amazing. So you definitely deserve a round of applause for that. Maybe it's outside of your comfort zone, but doing that again is that adventure. Trying to feel that movement and that stillness as well. Noticing how different it is. There are some yoga classes that offer yin yan, or I've heard it called yanyasa, um, yin vinyasa. I mean, there's so many different weird names, but some of them have like a little bit of yan and a little bit of yin. 
a little vinyasa and a little slow. All of these are options. Don't think that you aren't a yogi if you can't do Ashtanga sun salutations. <laughs> You're a yogi just for being here. It's very important to find what works for you. We'll be here for one more minute. And maybe you want to try something different. If you can look up. Cat holding its tail is an option where you take the back arm and you look for the lower leg and you grab your foot. Now, don't roll up like me, but this is what it looks like. So I've got my back foot and I have my knee bent and I'm holding it with that lower shoulder and it's really opening my shoulder here. So the upper leg, again, that knee maybe needs to be down on a block. Oh, hey, you can see my foot here. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. My knee is down, shoulders are back, and I'm grabbing my behind foot while it's on the ground. That's cat holding its tail, if you want to try that for the last minute. Again, maybe it doesn't work and you go back to that normal twist, or maybe this is enough. And you've asked yourself why it's enough, and it's just discomfort, so you can go into your savasana for a minute. There is no wrong way to do it unless there's pain. I'm going to be here for about another 30 seconds, and I'll give you some silence just to sink into the twist for the last few moments. And now, maybe releasing if you're in the cat, holding its tail, and start to unwind. First, again, going into that Shavasana, just laying on your back. Maybe you need to hug in your knees again, whatever it is that you have to find as you prepare to go into the spinal twist on the other side. So wherever you are, Again, now you take those knees in, give them a hug, maybe even roll your ankles here. Oof, I love popping those little ankle joints. And then either the one leg or the double knee, allowing your knees to fall to the other side. Again, finding if you need to have an aid to hold those knees up just to give you that release, right? That 20% less than your full twist. And then maybe find a place for your arms, either T-pose or above your head. Don't go directly in a cat pulling its tail. Well, I'll cue you for that in a few minutes. But find your twist on this side. And then we'll sink into it. So on the other side, I talked about options for blended classes that have yin and yang, your yin yasas. There is also a type of yoga class, if you haven't heard of it, called restorative. Restorative is a slow flow yoga, and it's actually one of my favorites. Restorative often uses yin poses, uh, but they're more guiding for a certain purpose, as opposed to yin where it's just sinking into the poses for the joints. And restorative can have a little bit more movement, I think they're fantastic and I would definitely do restorative classes using my yin training. So if you like them, you can suggest to me to do restorative classes as well. The pillow yoga aid workshop that I put up on YouTube, I believe is a restorative class. It's where you're relaxing <laughs> and you can do that in yin too. Uh, but definitely if you enjoy this, Give restorative classes a try as well. It's a lot of different names for the same stuff. There's a million different variations. For me, after taking this yin class, I've realized it's not about what you call it. It's about how you feel. 
Um, do I have to be a yogi to do this? No. Why do I do it? Well, it feels really good to twist out my spine. I see a chiropractor. And this is another step towards keeping that spinal health. But also for that mental health, right? I do appreciate the stillness. I do think that yin is very slow and sometimes a little bit too slow. So that's why I go towards slow flow and restorative personally. But giving yourself this time in these poses is a good blend. I also personally suffer from being a white female <laughs> Caucasian yoga instructor, which is the worst stereotype. The only thing I don't have is blonde hair. I can't change who I am. And for a lot of you, you know, I'm not just female, right? I'm non-binary. I have a lot of different gender identities and those don't show. So when people see me, they see white girl teaching yoga with leggings on. <laughs> I can't change that. But what I can change is my message. And that's why it's so great to have you all here. It's not about looking perfect on Instagram. It's about finding yourself and being yourself and knowing that you are enough. It's about thanking yourself for being on the mat right now and for taking time to do this yoga. That's what I can control. And yes, there will be people who are like, oh, it's just another yoga instructor, whatever. But I do have the cosplay. <laughs> I do have the fun music. I do have these cute little talks that we have together. I have myself and I'm comfortable with myself. People keep asking, well, now that you're a yoga teacher, are you going to use it as a job? And I said, well, you don't have to monetize everything. You don't have to monetize your hobbies. You don't have to monetize fun. And for some people, yeah, that money is important. But for me, just doing this free on Twitch is the best thing I can give you. All right, if you're in that pose now and you want to go into the cat grabbing its tail, Reach your upper hand back and grab your lower leg. It looks a lot better on this side. I should have demonstrated here. And again, notice if you need to put a block over that knee that's still twisted. So you're finding cat grabbing its tail on the other side if you'd like. The other part of the Yin Yoga project that is my personal project, in addition to teaching this class, which is the first official Yin Yoga class I've ever taught since my certification, is an art project drawing the Egretsuko characters. So Washimi was one, there are many more, and I'm posting them in the hopes that other people will appreciate this cool combination because there's yoga and Egretsuko. I like Egretsuko, I like yoga, I like art. So I'm making these poses for all of you. And someone's like, oh, you should make them and, and sell them. And I said, yeah, but that's not why I did it. I did it just to share with you for free. Don't tell me I need to sell it, guys. So asking those questions, why are you doing this, is, is always good. All right, so it's time to roll out into our Savasana. Unwind your cat. And if you'd like here, you can maybe put a block underneath your legs or feet just to have your feet dangle. When your feet are up and not touching the ground, it can give you a sense of relaxation. If that feels bad, don't do it. You can just do your normal Savasana. Wherever you are, maybe you need to pull a blanket on top. We have not done much movement, so it might get chilly. Roll those shoulders back and down. Release your ankles, feet. Release your knees and your hips. Maybe adjust the flesh underneath your bottom and your shoulders just to get it in touch with the earth. Palms up to receive energy or maybe palms down to ground. Release your neck, maybe do a couple neck rolls. Release your chin and let your tongue go. Release that little area between your eyes and your forehead. 
let your body completely relax. And I am done waxing to you all. Now is the time for you to have a Savasana. It'll be about five minutes. So again, notice your thoughts, maybe asking why you feel this way. What is this? What stops you? I'll call you out in a few minutes and please enjoy your Savasana. You are allowed to stay here as long as you need. And yin yoga can often have a savasana twice as long as this. So if you'd like to stay here, feel free and come out when you're ready. And if you're with me, begin to bring small movements into your wrists, fingers, ankles, toes. Take a deep breath in, filling your lungs. And when you're ready, come into a big full body stretch. Really notice those joints. Even though we didn't do much, doesn't it feel like you did a lot? That's because you did. And when you're ready, roll to one side and just stay there curled up. Just for a moment and then in between, between that piece of the yin yoga, maybe that discomfort. Before you go into the world again, And then when you're ready, come to seated. Again, noticing if you want to do cross-legged or the W or sit on a block or on a blanket. And your eyes can stay closed. You can invite a gentle gaze. Come back to the intention that you set 
during the class and decide if you'll take it with you as you move forward. And if you'd like to sit a new one, feel free. And no matter what, again, know that you are enough. And I hope that you found peace today. So again, to finish off, inhale, arms up. Exhale, bringing your hands down to heart center. Big inhale. Exhale. And we'll seal our practice for the day with the last biggest inhale. And let everything go. The light, the love, and the teacher in me. Thanks, the light, the love, and the teacher in all of you. Thank you so much for being here for this yin yoga adventure. And enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you all so much. Again, I am Riffling Designs at Riffling Designs. This has been Yin Yoga. Next month may or may not happen because I'm doing in-person yoga at both Otakon and AwesomeCon. Otakon, we're doing Friday and Saturday yoga. You can search for it on Guidebook. AwesomeCon, I think we're doing four, which includes Demon Slayer, uh, Marvel, maybe even some Pokemon. So if you feel safe going out, into a convention, feel free to go. And if not, there will be more virtual opportunities in the future. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, but I, so far the Blurred Con one that I went to was fantastic. I really had fun doing kids yoga at Blurred Con. So that was really exciting. And for now, if you have any questions, feel free. And if not, again, I will see you all next time. So thank you for participating. And I hope that you were able to find something valuable today. Take care, everybody.